Hey guys, so with all the spring holidays approaching, I thought it was time that we tackle one of my favorite party foods, quiche. Now quiche is one of those things that you really wanna have a foolproof recipe at your disposal, because when it goes wrong, it can really go wrong. And we have all seen those effects. The crumbly crust, the fillings that have no structure and turn into a bit of a wobbly mess, the add-ons that are sort of half cooked, yeah, we've all seen it. It's not pretty, but not to worry because I am going to arm you with a fantastic recipe that'll have you making a great tasting quiche every single time. And the best part is it can all be made the day before. My kind of meal. So before we begin, tip number one has to do with choosing the right pan. I'm a big fan of these removable bottom tart pans because you can make a quiche or a tart and then when it's fully baked, all you have to do is remove the ring and you are left with a beautiful presentation. Now, if you want to know where to get one of these pans, I put a link in the description for where you can get one for just under $20. Now, if you don't have a tart pan or you don't have a food processor, that's okay. Here's how you can make another great looking quiche. Go and buy one of those store-bought pie crusts. Typically, the ones with are deep dish will work the best. Then, here's a little cheat that I learned when I worked in a bakery when I was 16. It was my first job and my job was pie duty. <laughs> and one of the things that they taught me how to do, which is a great little cheat, is to take the store-bought pie crust, crimp it all around the edges so that you're creating sort of a nice flat surface, then go in and start pinching the sides, just creating nice little uh, triangles all around the edges. And when you're done, it'll look like you actually rolled out that dough and formed it yourself. And it really looks great with this recipe as well. So the first thing we're gonna do to make our homemade crust is we're going to take a cup and a quarter of flour, add it to our food processor with a teaspoon of salt. Give that a light pulse, and then you're gonna add one half cup of butter. And you wanna make sure that that butter is in little cubes. Go ahead and just add it as you're pulsing the machine. You'll know when it's done when the flour resembles a coarse meal. So here is my second tip when it comes to preventing those crumbly crusts. You really wanna make sure that you put some egg in your dough because the egg is really gonna help the flour and the butter bind together and prevent your crust from turning into a crumbly mess. <laughs> so I'm a big fan of adding egg and water to pie crust dough. So you're gonna give your egg a nice light whisk. You're gonna add that egg mixture to your flour mixture, just pulsing all the while until a nice dough develops. And you can stop. At this point, I know we're supposed to take that dough, wrap it up, put it in the fridge for 30 minutes, but I have found that I cheat a little bit and it always tends to work for me. So I'm gonna share with you my little technique. Now I know this is very unconventional and there could be pastry chefs out there that are rolling your eyes at me. I know, but this is what I do. I take the dough, I roll it out really quickly, just reminding myself that I know I'm not supposed to do this, but I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> it seems to sort of help move things along. Then I take the dough, I plop it into my tin, work it in all around the sides, making sure that it's nice and fit. And then I do what I call little fist bumps. And I take my fist and I go all along the side, just making sure that the sides of the pan are all fitted. And sometimes when you do that, the dough will rise up to the tart pan. That's okay, that's what you want. Because we're gonna take a little paring knife and we're going to trim all along the side of the dough. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our tin and we're gonna pop it in the freezer for at least 20 minutes. That's okay, we have other things to do while our dough is getting nice and hard. At this stage, we're gonna work on our filling. So you're gonna take out a large saute pan. To that, you're gonna add a tablespoon of butter. Once it's nice and melted, you're gonna add a half a cup of diced white onion. Then you're gonna season just to taste with some salt and pepper. Then once it's nice and sauteed and those onions are translucent, you can go ahead and add the spinach. Now, if you've never cooked with spinach before, not to worry, it looks like a ton of spinach. And I'm using six ounces here, but it is going to cook down to about a cup. So just keep your eye on it and give it a saute till it's nice and wilted. Once it reaches that stage, you can go ahead and turn off your flame and let the filling cool. Meanwhile, we're going to work on our egg batter. So in a large bowl, you're going to add 10 eggs. Give those a good whisk. Then we are going to add a cup of heavy cream. Now this is my other tip for you if you wanna get a foolproof quiche. Quiche at the end of the day is not diet food, unfortunately. <laughs> it tastes too good to be diet food. It's really party food. And if you wanna make a fantastic tasting quiche, you gotta go with the full cream. So a lot of you know this as double pouring cream. In France, when I buy it, it's called uh, creme liquide. So really, it's just a heavy pourable cream that you can use to really give your quiche a lot of structure. If you end up using milk or half and half, your quiche is probably not gonna have that kind of structure. It'll be kind of wobbly. 
because you really need that full fat to give it that structure. So word to the wise, use the heavy cream. Whisk that together, and then we're gonna add our seasonings. So we're going to add a teaspoon of salt, some freshly cracked pepper, and an eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Now, I love a little kick in a quiche in the form of some cayenne pepper, but if you're not a fan of spice, you could either leave it out, or another traditional thing to do to add to a quiche is some nutmeg. So you could add an eighth of a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. Give that a whisk, and there you have it. Your egg mixture is done. Now, this is a great recipe that you could really put any filling into this. I like the spinach and the onion because I think it's really great for springtime, but you could use cheese and ham, you could use mushroom, ratatouille, really any filling you like, you can add to this batter. So really get creative. The choice is up to you. And at this point, our spinach and onion mixture is probably cooled. So you can go ahead and just pour it out onto a cutting board. You want to give that spinach a nice rough chop. Go ahead and place it into your bowl. Give it a whisk. And then we are going to add a half a cup of grated Gruyere cheese. It's really the best kind of cheese to use for a quiche like this. Okay, so now, here is another tip for you. A lot of times, quiche recipes will call for blind baking the crust ahead of time, which essentially just means taking your crust, putting some parchment paper down with some beans and baking the crust. I have found that this is where you can really trip up because a lot of times that crust will not hold its shape. It'll start to sort of sink down and then you end up with a sort of misshapen crust. Yeah, I hate the blind baking. I am really not a fan of it. I think it does more damage than good in my opinion. So what I do, and this is why we froze it, we wanted to get make sure that that crust was nice and hard when it hits a hot oven. We are just gonna go ahead and work quickly and we are gonna pour our batter right into our crust and we're gonna pop it in a 350 degree oven for about 45 to 50 minutes. Now, you wanna keep your eye on it. You wanna make sure that the crust and that the quiche is nice and golden brown, but that the quiche is not wobbly. If it starts to wiggle or jiggle, your quiche is not done, and it probably needs another five to 10 minutes. If your quiche is getting too brown on top, you can just go ahead and cover it with some aluminum foil, and that way the quiche will cook inside, but your crust and your quiche will not burn on the outside. When your quiche is done, you can go ahead and pull it out of the oven, and let it cool. If you're serving it right away, you can go ahead and just slice it in half and then slice it into quarters or eighths. And I also love to serve this dish with a beautiful tossed salad. And if you missed last week's recipes, you can actually click on the annotation here and you will see some of my favorite salad dressing recipes. That would be perfect for this quiche. Now, if you wanted to make this ahead of time for a party, that is a great thing to do. And in fact, this is what I'm gonna be doing for Easter this year. You can go ahead and make your quiches, let them cool completely, then wrap them in aluminum foil, pop it in the fridge overnight, and then when you want to serve them, go ahead and put them in a 300 degree oven, still covered, for at least 20 minutes. Then remove the foil and allow them to bake without the foil for about five minutes. And you'll see all you have to do the day of the party is toss your salad and warm up your quiche and you're good to go. I love this recipe because quiche is such an elegant thing to serve at a party. It's great lap food too. So you can slice a piece if you have a big crowd. People can kind of eat it on their laps. They're having something elegant that isn't too messy. People will be so blown away when they heard that you made your own quiche crust and all. I hope you guys give this one a try and let me know what you think. And I will see you back here next week when we're going to have a really fun collaboration all around Easter desserts. You won't want to miss that. I'll see you then. Bye.